This episode of In the Bite Doc Talk is brought to you by Release Ruler. Release Ruler, patented weight estimating fish rulers using growth chart research to provide fish measurement solutions for safe release. Available online at www.releaseruler.com. Welcome to this edition of Doc Talk. I'm your host, Dale Wills. And we got a, a special guest in house here today. It's uh, president of Viking Yachts, Pat Healy. And um, many of you know uh, Pat from being around the docks and the tournament scene and being active in the demos. And um, you know, this company was founded in 1964 by Pat's dad, Bill, and his brother, Bob. They uh, started building a 37 foot uh, convertible billfish boat and today they've uh, delivered over 4,700 uh, Viking yachts. So uh, it's a true American success story. And um, today we're gonna talk about the sport fishing market, today's market, um, the latest models from Viking yachts, uh, what role a captain and crew play in building, the, uh, building a Viking, and um, how you can see the latest demo where it's gonna be this summer. And then finally, some big news on the expansion here at Viking Yachts. So, uh, Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you. Look forward to it. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's start off talking about today's sport fishing market and possibly how it's changed here in the last, you know, ten years ten or so. Ten years. Yeah. Well, the the market has evolved, and uh, obviously, through the recession of two thousand and eight, we lost a lot of good boat builders, uh, and. You know, the sport fishing market has become defined to just a few builders. It's Viking, uh, Hatteras, Bertram, I guess, is getting involved in building a new boat, designing a 35. Uh, but we lost a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of boat builders. And a lot of that came about over the years, over the last 20 years. The market maybe was 400 boats uh, 15 years ago and it's probably about 150 new boats uh, a year. Uh, right now we build 75 boats a year, so we approximately have about 50% of the market. Wow. And the custom guys and the Hatteras have, have the rest of it. And what has happened is the European um, uh, motor yacht uh, companies were very successful in, in being able to recruit the uh, convertible buyer, you know, it's the, the nomenclature, it's convertible, sport fish convertible. And that really came about, they were all sedans. A sedan was a, a term from 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and then it went into a convertible and then a sport fish. And a lot of that was, well, years ago, you would see a lot of our customers in the Great Lakes, Long Island Sound, Chesapeake, they would go out and they would buy one of our sport fish version, what we call today, and use that for cruising. So that market's evolved, a lot of that market has evolved into the European uh, boat builder, Princess Yacht. We, we're yeah. the distributor for Princess Yacht in North America, and uh, Tom Carroll saw that trend in, uh, 20 years ago when we got involved in it. So we're not out of that side of the business, but it, it's allowed us now to focus on a lot bigger sport fish boats, and that's been a tremendous thing. Though, hey, we're at 42 feet, uh, and soon to be going to 37 feet. And you know, what we like to do is, is get a buyer in its infancy of boat buying and uh, have them and then keep them all the way along to brand loyalty and, and sure. have a lot of success in keeping them with all the, different brand, the, all the different sizes that we build, the models that we have, trying to make sure everything that they want or would aspire to have, we have it in our lineup. And that's the, the key today and new product. Yeah, like new the growth product. curve of a, of a buyer. You know, exactly. The intro, then they get up there and then they mature. And uh, that brings me, let's talk about the, uh, the new models at Viking. You guys, um, how many different, you're saying your smallest one's 42 and the largest right now you build is 92. Yes. And currently you guys have just introduced, um, what, what's the latest models you've introduced here? Well, we've, my, our big philosophy and a lot of our success is, is staying out on the development of, of new product. We have a budget that's $6 million a year dedicated to building uh, and designing new boats. Hmm. And uh, and that's from ground up, yeah. not not taking models, existing models, and 
adding a foot, stretching a foot, putting a new deck house on top of a, an old hull designed. I mean, we start, we tank test everything. Uh, everything is redesigned from a clean piece of paper. Wow. And it's the evolution. It's the evolution of what we discover during uh, all, all the demos. I mean, God, uh, you know, we've, been, we've had uh, five 70 convertibles as demos and, and over the last six years, and our new 72 will be finished and be in Moorhead City at the Big Rock in the middle of June this year. And you know, we've put a thousand hours almost on every one of them. So over 5,000 hours, we've been able to make that, to be able to find out all the things to make it the most perfect boat. It was about as perfect to get. It's an icon in the industry. The 70 Viking has gone around the world all over the place and has won tournaments and been extremely, extremely successful. And they do that. And, and a lot of companies would have just kept the boat. And it was funny thing, it actually came faster than we thought. We bought a new five axis profiler. And the five axis profiler is how we cut all the, the molds, the plugs. We make a plug out of foam and it's all carved. And we have it, it's, a, it's about a 100 foot long gantry. Mm. Uh, it's got about a 30 foot Z. And so we're cutting all blocks of foam. And then we put those blocks of foams together to make a plug. From the plug, once we, uh, once we have the plug finished, then we make the mold and then we're, we're, we're in business. And the, the, the new machine, it's, it's a million and a half dollar investment. And the new machine is twice as fast as the old machine. And we, it was never, I don't think we all were just, we had, we, had, we had the first CNC machine at the size of it was in North American. And uh, we were actually cut a skull for the Olympics, 60 foot. With, mm. We were the only ones that could cut it one piece and they could make a one piece mole out of it. So we cut the plug for them. Now, many manufacturers uh, have what we are using, but it's amazing how fast and efficient and how it makes that plug so perfect. And it took a lot of time out and a boat that was going to be introduced in my, or Fort Lauderdale is now being introduced in June because of the amount of time we were able to save with that machine. It's cut so in half. It's, it's just phenomenal. It takes the same amount of time to design it, but our guys, you know, we have a great team headed up by Lonnie Rutt and, and David Wilson, uh, designing and engineering the boats, and they do an incredible job, along with uh, Don Gamel and Ryan Higgins and Drew McDowell. You know, that's pretty myself is, is the group that uh, sit around every couple months and decide where we're gonna go, what we can, what can we do better? And also How can go we build fishing a, a lot together oh, I, well, too. That's, hey, that's, that's our, the dream that's our team, team right there. That's, that's our team. Yeah. I mean, so. we've been doing this for yeah. 20 years together and um, you know, it, it's, I don't do anything else, I build boats. Yeah, I, and that's, that's one thing I, I've personally admired about you and, and the Viking company is that you guys are out there on the dock. You're out there fishing in tournaments, you're using the boats. You're 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 in the bite. I mean, you're I out there, it. and so uh, I think that translates into you know listening to guys, what the current market wants, um, innovating. Um, you know, I just think that that's a big part of your your success. But I also was fortunate to attend your uh, 50th anniversary, and I'll never forget you and your dad up there talking about your philosophy. Yep. And, and that is? It's very key. I mean, we, 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 we stride to build a better boat every day. That was the philosophy of my father and my uncle, and it's the philosophy that's been enrooted in all of us at Viking, yeah. whether it be Viking South and Mike Samuels' group that does a terrific job, services 500 boats here at the wow, service center many. a year. I mean, wow. it's, it's insane. Mm. And we, we service all boats. It's not just Viking. Yeah. Boat. We take care of them all. But... Uh, it's just, hey, this is what we do. And, and the greatest thing about the team that we were just discussing, you know, over the course of the last year, you know, we have a, a 92 that's 18 months out of, out of completion and design out running around with uh, hull number 14 uh, has, is, is going to be going on the line shortly. And that is sold. And a new 80, a new 72, 
Um, and I, a 48, wow. a new 48 convertible, a 48 open, and a 48 sport tower. That's all been in the last 14, 15 months. Wow, that's great. And, it, you know, it's, we've got this wonderful team. And without it, there's 60 people in our engineering design group. And it's very important. All of them have a function in the process. And the process is, is very, you know, we, we work on a schedule. We have to have a schedule. It's very, very important that we stay on schedule and, and we make the deadlines that we have because years ago it was a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we would miss it and we'd be off by months and now everything runs on a schedule and, and Lonnie Rutt does an incredible job to make sure that all of it stays on, on tight and David Wilson does it great and trying to keep the rest of us all harnessed, but you're right, sitting in that cockpit in Los Buenos <laughs> or the White Marlin Open or yeah. wherever we might be in the world, Dominican Republic, we're all sitting there and it inevitably goes back to what we can design and do better. And we're just always innovating and always pushing that envelope. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, let's say, um, you know, I've, I, I'm a captain and I've got my boss and, and here we go, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and build a new Viking. What, what role does a captain and crew and the owner, because they're all part of the same team in, in, in most cases, like what role does uh, the captain and crew play when they're visiting and, and, and making decisions and things like that? How does that work out? The amazing thing is today's buyer in the world that we're in today, it's he's working 24-7 uh, and he depends on his crew. So a crew may be, uh, they go and they, were, they go and scout everything out for him, get everything set up. Uh, and, and do all the review. So that's what, you know, it's very important when we're out at these tournaments to engage as much as we possibly can with all the captains and the mates to get their feedback to how to build a better boat. But they, tr they play a, absolutely a tremendous role in, in the whole equation uh, from the purchase right on through the construction part. And, and the nice thing is we encourage it. We encourage them to come to New Gretna and spend as much time as they want in New Gretna because it just, it, let's do it your way, let's do it one way and be done with it and get it exactly the way you want. There's no sense uh, having to redo things, let's do it, do it the first time. It's best for me, mm -hmm. for our schedule, for Viking, and it's best for their owner that we get it and we, all the planning's done and we put all the, all the time in to doing it right. Okay. And, and, and that's the, they're great. I mean, the, the, the feedback today that we get from captains is tremendous. Robbie Moore runs the Follow Me, the 92. He's in the Dominican right now doing very well with the uh, 92. And, you know, in, in the, in the uh, phase of putting the tower electronics on, uh, you know, Robbie gave us a lot of good input on how to do things better. And, you know, we sent a couple crews down and worked with Robbie to make sure that boat was as best it could have been. And, uh, sure. and the, the feedback that he got gave us, you know, we implemented in, in, the, next. All, in the next, exactly. So it's, and we do that with all of our, our the, the captains and mates. They're my eyes and ears, man. They're just as important to me as, uh, you know, the, the Ryan Higgins and the Don Gamels and the David Wilsons and the Lonnie Rutz. I mean, we're all one big family and all one big team, man. And, and that's the important thing is that we, we, we get that feedback and we do something with it. We make the improvements. And, and that's how you build a better product. And, and that's the one thing that, you know, I thoroughly enjoy fishing. I mean, God, I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you do. I absolutely love it. And I love building boats. And if I don't do the boat building thing right, can't go do the fishing thing. Yeah. And so it's very important for me to go fishing because uh, like I said, I do two things in life. I build boats and I go fishing. Yeah. And that's, that's about it. Well, that's a great segue into, uh, you know, 2016's, you know, we're here in March right now. And, and this summer, uh, you guys got your, 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 your event down in Key West. That's mm -hmm. a very, uh, that seems to be getting more popular. It's I mean, be, you had how many? Uh, we'll probably be 42 to 45 boats this year. And we have a waiting list of probably 15 boats, and, and that was slip issues in Key West is, yeah. is the biggest problem. But what a great venue. Yeah. And, the, and the neat thing is what we're trying to do, there's so many money tournaments 
that we all fish in. All of our owners fish in. And what we're doing is we're doing a family-oriented tournament where there's no money, a little bit of a, a Calcutta, but it's mostly about the kids and the women, you know, women anglers and, and, and kids and a, uh, a kids fishing tournament on the dock where if they can turn a handle, they're in. And, and it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful weekend. And the town of Key West is terrific, man. If, you know, if you can't have fun in Key West, it's, uh, it's pretty sad. And hey, it's not that we all go out and have fun every night, but man, yeah. it's pretty neat to walk down the Val Streets put your nose in for a minute and say, wow, you remember when? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Irish Cabins and Absolutely. the sunsets and Great spot, and all, great oh, yeah. music. And yeah. everybody's got a smile on their face. So that is yeah. a fun week. And, I, and I, it was funny, um, my assistant, uh, Gina Waldron, uh, let it slip that uh, you know they have nicknames for me. And one of my nicknames <laughs> is Key West Pat. And I'm like, well, what's Key West Pat mean? He says, oh, Key West Pat is where you're really chilled out and relaxed and you're having fun. And then there's Boat Show Pat. Oh, yeah. Then there's, oh, Pat didn't do well in the tournament, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, but it's, oh, it's a great event. And, you know, we're going to debut our uh, 72, a new 72 in, um, in Big Rock. Uh, and that should be an exciting time. Uh, Brian Comer on the Viking 62 yeah, and won nice. the Big Rock last year with a big fish. I was with Higgins and Donnie and, and the rest of the gang in the Dominican Republic fishing in that tournament. And uh, so we're going to go and debut the 72 this, this What's year. What's the 72 going to be powered with? Um, it's going to be powered with a pair of 16 V M96s. The engines are awesome. 2400. 26. 2600 yeah. horsepower. And I will have to say, after all the years of uh, MTU got it right with this motor. I mean, they really, really have done a great job um, with uh, eliminating the smoke, maneuvering smoke. The response on a fish is tremendous. It's allowing a 92-foot boat to fish like a 70-foot boat, and a 70-foot boat to fish like a 50-foot boat. So it, it's just, it's pretty sick. All the technology mm -hmm. that's gone in today in these boats. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, what, what a boat that we build today has over a thousand systems in it. A boat that we built 15 years ago had 250 systems wow. in it. It's, it's, uh, it's sick. Not only is there a bilge pump, there's a high water alarm. There's uh, how many times did that bilge pump cycle in 24 hours? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's just, that's Wireless. just, that used to be just a bilge pump. Yeah. Well, this float switch, and a manual switch on the helm. That's all it is. Oh. That's all it was. Now it's 10 systems all around it. But hey, these are things that people want. You got Mesair, you've got so many different things, which stretches all the capacity of the boat. Your generators, you're dealing with tier three. Tier three is a EPA compliant for generators and engines. We have a big one coming in in 2021, tier four, oh, wow. which we're gonna deal with. We're putting a, a group together of all the boat builders that will go out and deal, deal with tier four. And hopefully we'll go down to Washington and, and Jimmy Donofrio from the RFA, who's a great lobbyist and does a terrific, terrific job. He's gonna head that up for all of us boat builders. Over 72 feet, we're gonna to have to go to catalytic converters, scrubbers, and these are the equipment right now, which is designed to do all of that, is this is half the size of an engine so we don't have it anywhere in our design mm. so we're hopefully we're gonna see the the law was written years ago when when a 72 foot uh boat was never thought to we would build probably 35 boats over 70 feet this year you know and that wasn't the intention of when the regulation was written so we're going to hopefully go down there. We have some time. We have five years to deal with it, but we have to deal with it. And um, that would be detrimental to uh, our sport fishing uh, boats if that's something that we had to haul around with us. Uh, and the reality of it is it was put on for commercial boats and it, implemented in, it implements into Tier 4. But the problem becomes is that it was written so long ago that at that point, you never thought there was a 72-foot boat would be a pleasure craft. Yeah. So, well, well, we're going to work on that and, 
and hopefully get that taken yeah, care of. Yeah, and there's, a, you know, there's other issues with no fishing zones. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is just get out there, introduce more people to fish and get them out on their Vikings, and get them out active, fishing, man. be You've active. You've got to be support. active in your yeah. political process. I mean, it, it really makes a difference. Uh, get behind what when people call you to arms, get there, get Send involved, the and, uh, and, and exactly, the emails. Send the emails to your congressman. It, it, it works, it helps. We have to be out, we have to, to be like every other industry. That's how every other industry works. You know, oh we're, we're a fragmented industry, and uh, because there's fishing, there's cruising, there's jet boats, there's jet skis, there's fishing console, uh, center consoles, there's pontoon boats. I mean, look at, wow, the pontoon boat's the hottest boat in the industry right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys have had recently had some big news with, um, with the expansion, and, uh, you know, could you talk a little bit about that and, and, and sure. let people know what Absolutely. Viking is, is, is doing right now? It's pretty Absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. Um, last summer, John Leake and I, we run a tournament together in Cape May, and John and I had lunch, as we always do, uh, during the tournament and sitting down uh, having a hamburger. And, and John said to me, um, you know, Pat, uh, this has really been a tough, tough deal for us. And uh, what would you think about buying our facility? And I said, John, I'd be very interested. And, and, and it was a matter of five minutes. We worked out an arrangement. That it's the worked. Ocean Yachts facility. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Good. Yep. And, and John and I, I said to John that uh, one important factor for this to happen would be that uh, your son, John IV, comes along with, uh, with it. And, uh, and so John is, is on our team now, and the fourth, and, uh, and he's going to do a tremendous job. He's a bright young guy and a great boat builder. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to get a boat builder with that experience and to have that future ahead of us. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our production from 52 feet and down and move that over to what will be referred to now as Viking Mullica. Uh, and it's a great facility. It's 100,000 square feet. Mm. It's tailor-made for our small end of our brand. And so we'll build 52 uh, convertibles, sport towers, sport coupes. We'll build 48 convertibles, sport towers, and sport coupes and expresses and we'll build our 42 there. And uh, a, along with the facility, we also, uh, John and I worked out on the 37 Billfish, yeah. which is a great boat. And, and um, it's, they, you know, that was a great design when they came out with it. I was so, they, 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 they hit it perfect on the design, the execution, on the build, quality build, everything about it was terrific. It debuted in 2008. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was Top a of case recession. of bad timing. Yep, yep. A case of bad timing when it all started to hit. And though all through the process, they did build 25 of them. Uh, and what we're going to do is we've gone and identified about 20 to 25 items that we're going to tweak. The boat's a great design, a super design. The molds are impeccable. So we're very happy. We had a, a great meeting about three weeks ago. And the great thing, not only is John, did John the fourth come on board, but also 10 of their best uh, people were oh, also. Oh, that's great. So we, we mm. got a nice infusion, and we're going to move about 100 and, uh, about 100 people off of our line three, because that's the production line three production. And they will move over to Viking Mullica. We're about 15 mi miles, uh, not even miles, it's probably about... 10 miles and we're about 15 minutes apart. We're on the Bass River, they're on the Mullica River, and we both go into the Great Bay. So it's gonna be a, a great thing. And um, the building, uh, we're, go we're just starting right now into a, um, you know, renovating it and just getting everything up, moving the equipment in. We'll start production in, the, in August slash September with the first boat coming out of the building will be a 37 billfish oh, nice. for next uh, January at our VIP show here in Palm Beach. And then we're, and I think right now we have about an order for 10 of them between the dealers and there's four retails that are in process. So we'll, we'll do a, the first 10 boats out of that factory will be 
uh, the 37 billfish, and then in that during that time, uh, which would be July and uh, August, we'll start moving all the other molds over. And uh, so we're excited. I think it's mm. a great move. Uh, it's a great facility, and what it also does, it gives us a chance. We um, started a line of our own motor yachts built here in New Gretna and uh, 75 has been the first one. We've sold five of those boats in its first year of existence. I missed that in the new model. Uh, yeah. That So we do, included with the boats I, I mentioned earlier, is the 75 motor yacht. Uh, what we we have under development right now, and it's pretty cool, uh, we just finished a 10,000 square foot addition to our R&D building, and that was put in and constructed just for big hulls, just for big hulls. And uh, we're, so we're under design and, and um, we're carving and assembling right now a 93 foot hull for a 93 foot motor yacht. Oh, that nice. will be finished in about 18 months. And, uh, and that was what, what we're gonna do is move the smaller boat production out of New Gretna mm -hmm. over to Viking Mullica. Free up. Sorry. And free up the space for uh, to build the bigger motor yachts, which we see, what trend we see is of those five uh, motor yachts that we have sold, uh, two of them came out of sport fish boats. You know, people that, and, and have gotten older and they just wanna, they wanna float around and they wanna be, and they might get a, a 42 footer or a 37 bill fish. So we wanna try to fit every niche of the market Cradle to grave, I mentioned it earlier. Yeah. You know, you, you want to make sure that you stay <coughs> with what you have for all the customers. And so we think that, uh, and my uncle has a saying, we don't have, you know, with each downturn, you know, in the, in the, in the boating business, it's yeah. not a matter if we are going to have a downturn, it's when are we going to have a downturn. Yeah. And so that we want to be able to not have all of our apples in one basket. Yeah, and I, and I see that trend uh, just over in the Bahamas now, you're seeing more people with a mothership and, exactly. and they're wanting, I think a lot of it is, is just being able to, you know, if you have the means, controlling your environment. Yeah. You want your dinner, you want your food, you want your bed, you know, instead of possibly staying in a, in a hotel. But, you know, then again, you got some of your, your, your convertibles are big enough that they have both that yeah. fishing and you know. And the segment that we're chasing in the motor yacht business is enclosed bridge, American built, oh. plenty of cubes, you know, big cubes. The, all the, between the Italians, the English, they do a wonderful job, style, look, but just say, hey, go to a- What's go, a cube? Uh, cubes in, inside the boat, the, the, so, the volume inside the boat. Okay, cubic feet, I got Cubic you. feet, you got it. <laughs> yeah, all right. No problem, and so what we wanna do is to be a big and airy, us Americans, we want our space. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people, other cultures around the world, and you know, the biggest thing that, you know, our, we sell about 15% this year, we're gonna sell about 15% of our production outside of the United States, North America, let's call it North America. Opportunity. And typically we've been as high as 30%. Of course, with the, the global picture right now is a little foggy, and, but that will improve. Mm -hmm. Just like we had our issues and, and, and great businessmen always get together and rise to the occasion. And you'll see that around the world over the next year and a half. And you know, I'm looking in two years from now for the export business to be back to 30%. And that's where our growth will be. Uh, I, you know, it's the nice thing is as the economy gets better, the, the key that I see right now is that entrepreneur, the boats that are under $4 million are back strong and it took a little bit to get there. The sure. boats over 4 million bucks have been strong for the last, since 2000, you know, it started coming back late 2010 and, and you know, it just kept on going and, and just implementing you know, every 10, 15% a year getting better and better. and. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great growth and you know, the, the nice thing is, is the big market's been strong. The, the under $4 million, which is 62 feet and down, has now get, gotten yeah, strong sure. and that's the entrepreneur. That's the guy that has his own company with anywhere from 20 employees to a couple hundred employee that has battled through this recession and has done well and is finally saying, hey, I feel comfortable enough where we are. Yeah. We'll all feel more comfortable uh, after November and we get all that stuff <laughs> behind yeah. us, but that's reality. 
Well, I know one thing, you know, and, and uh, you guys have done a great job is there's one constant in business and you know that is change. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's a dynamic, uh, you know, to be in business and you guys have done a, a great job in, in adapting and being able to be nimble and, and introducing and, and just timing that. That's that's uh, a key to your, your success. And um, well, it's you know, the, the biggest thing is is when I reflect on it is the, it's about the people. It's all about the people yeah. and, and, and we have such a great team and we're all in it together and without the team you're not going to succeed no matter what you do. Having private ownership without question being in our family for as long as the, 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 the company's been, you know, we're 52 years on April 1st we'll be mm. in, in business and, and it's very key for us to have that success. And, and having that stability, you give the team the stability and the financial wherewithal to succeed. Right now, you know, the greatest thing about, you know, in our, in our um, plant engineering, we have guys that all they do is design buildings for us. So we're, we're designing the buildings <laughs> for down here out of New Gretna and we'll look for the right opportunity and we'll, 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 we'll upgrade the facility. The facility is, uh, I guess, about 15 years old now, and it's been a phenomenal and phenomenal investment for our customers. And, you know, people looked at us and like, why would you want to invest $20 million uh, in one facility to, uh, but it's all about the customer experience. And uh, it was a difficult thing is getting things repaired and done in Southeast Florida because it's so, so much, the populace of boats is tremendous. Yep. And it, 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 you know, we went and did it ourselves. And, and that's been one of our best things that we've ever done. Absolutely. Is, is doing it ourselves and bringing Mike Samuels was the service manager in New Gretna and he came down and headed it up with another gentleman, Luke Correa, that was our production manager. Lou has since retired and Michael's run it for the last 10 years. And Lou was there in the, for the first five and Don Gamel is based out of here, Drew McDowell, Ryan Higgins, um, just the amount of quality of people that we've been able to attract to, to work for us down here has been tremendous. So we're gonna have a, a neat, that, that will just be a, a fixture on the waterfront right behind Peanut Island for many, many years to come. And, yep. and it'll be, you know, it's where you can go get your boat taken care of. That's, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, Pat, you guys, again, you know, it's, uh, it's it's innovating and and like you're saying you're the only one of the few companies i don't know uh, too many others that that actually build a boat and have a service facility yeah. for the support so uh the viking story is um i encourage you to go online read about it uh again i know pat you're you're always cordial on the dock mm -hmm. if somebody sees this wants to take a look at a viking Please the salon doors us. open absolutely you know? and, and as dale mentioned if you anytime you're in the New Jersey area, southern New Jersey, we're right by Atlantic City. Come and see us. Have the Viking famous lunch. Everybody gets a lunch, and it's the best deli in New Gretna. <laughs> it's the only one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for, for tuning in here today. And, uh, you know, please share this with, uh, you know, share this or like us on Facebook, the social media. Um, we're out here. We're, we're, we're on the dock. We're, we're, you know, this is the real deal. So, uh, Pat, I can't thank you for uh, coming out here today and um, love it. Viking, go That's Viking, it. right? Absolutely. All right, buddy. Thank you so much.